Billionaire Jeff Bezos has a compelling vision for space, and it's entirely genuine. From way back before his Amazon days, Bezos has been a true believer in the power of using space to improve life on Earth. Our planet, he always says, is a garden to be preserved. This is the only good planet in the solar system. We've sent robotic probes to all of them, and this is the only good one. We have to take care of it. And when you go to space and see how fragile Earth is, you'll want to take care of it even more. To accomplish this, Bezos founded Blue Origin in 2000 to build a road to space. This simply means bringing down the cost of launching rockets by reusing them over and over again. By lowering the cost of reaching space, Bezos seeks to move heavy industry off Earth. Instead of strip mining our planet, he says, we should glean those resources from lifeless asteroids. Our insatiable energy needs, too, might be met by space-based solar power farms. And finally, expanding into space would allow humanity to grow as a species, eventually populating orbital settlements near Earth and then other worlds. This unlimited opportunity for expansion would save humans from entering a status and from fighting for increasingly scarce resources on Earth. Bezos is theoretically right about all this. Today, roughly half the world's population lacks access to reliable electricity and reasonably high living condition. The only long-term means to bring this half of the world's population up to the standard of living enjoyed by the developed world without destroying the Earth is likely accessing the bounty of resources in space. Building such a space economy and spacefaring civilization won't happen overnight, and that's why Bezos views Blue Origin as a multi-generational effort. The company has a plan. It started small with the New Shepard system and learned how to reuse rockets. It's currently developing the much larger New Glenn rocket, which will essentially use the New Shepard design as its second stage. There are plans for even bigger rockets down the line, all to move more mass to and from planet Earth much more cheaply. Yet, this plan has unfolded slowly. Bezos has not pushed forward with the same determination displayed by his leadership of Amazon. Blue Origin remains very far from self-sufficiency. Bezos must still pump more than a billion dollars into Blue Origin annually just to keep the lights on. Even for one of the world's richest people, this kind of financial backing doesn't seem sustainable. One day soon, Jeff Bezos will totally run out of time to save Blue Origin's failures. Find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. During the middle of the 2010s, after more than a decade of near silence, Blue Origin emerged from stealth mode with all appearances of becoming a formidable space company. It seemed probable that two titans of the tech industry, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, would now battle for supremacy in the space arena. In late 2014, Blue Origin stunned the space industry by announcing it had reached a deal to build rockets for the ULA, then the premier launch company in the U.S. United Launch Alliance selected Blue's BE-4 engine for its new Vulcan rocket over an offering from Aerojet Rocketdyne the Blue Blood propulsion company behind the majority of large rocket engines in U.S. history. About a year later, Blue Origin pulled off another feat by safely launching and landing the New Shepard rocket and the capsule on its up-and-down suborbital mission. This marked the first time in history that anyone, country, or company had vertically launched a first-stage rocket into space and then landed it back on the ground. The next month, December 2015, SpaceX repeated this launch and landing feat with its orbital Falcon 9 rocket for the first time. From a technical standpoint, the Falcon 9 landing was much more significant as it required about 30 times more energy to boost a payload into orbit and complicated engineering to slow such a booster down and return it to the landing site. No matter, after the Falcon 9 flight, Jeff Bezos cheekily tweeted, welcome to the club to Musk and SpaceX. Musk was decidedly not amused, but this banner underscored the emerging rivalry. Bezos and Musk, billionaire versus billionaire, on a quest to build reusable rockets and remake the space industry. Back then, it all seemed clear. The 21st century space race would be run by Blue Origin and SpaceX, and it was going to be a hell of a thing to watch. Only it hasn't been. There's been no race. Since the end of 2015, Blue Origin has launched its suborbital New Shepard system just 15 more times, an average of fewer than three missions per year. It was not until last year did humans finally get on board for a launch. But just last month, 
Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket suffered a serious problem after liftoff, forcing the vehicle's emergency abort system to jettison the capsule away from the booster. Now, before New Shepard can return to flight, the FAA will determine whether any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap affected public safety, it says. As for the BE-4 engine, after promising it would be ready for spaceflight in 2017, they've only had one engine to deliver a flight-ready version to the ULA more than five years later. And more pitifully, originally aiming for the first launch of New Glenn in 2020, but the huge New Glenn factory in Florida, it now appears to be mostly empty. SpaceX, by contrast, has ascended. Since December of 2015, the company has flown 180 orbital missions. It's developed and flown the world's most powerful rocket, the Falcon Heavy, and will soon debut its still more titanic Starship launch system. With the Starlink Internet constellation, SpaceX now operates more satellites than any nation or company in the world. And in 2020, thanks to SpaceX, NASA broke its dependency on Russia for human spaceflight. NASA astronauts now ride into space in style in the sleek Crew Dragon spacecraft. Blue Origin has also lost out when it comes to government contracts worth billions of dollars, something Bezos craves as he seeks to find return on his massive investment of Blue Origin. In 2020, the Department of Defense said it would only allow ULA and SpaceX to bid on a national security launch contracts in the mid-2020s. Blue Origin protested and lost. Then in April, NASA chose SpaceX alone for a prestigious human landing system. This coming after Bezos showily unveiled his company's Blue Moon Lander in 2019. Blue Origin protested, but failed. In short, a once promising space race has become something of a damp squib. In late 2019, when Elon Musk was asked why he thought Blue Origin had fallen behind, Bezos is not great at engineering, to be frank, Musk replied. The industry has taken notice, with popular memes such as ULA Alliance Chief Tori Bruno repeatedly asking, Jeff, where are my engines? The question is, after so many failures, will Bezos become reinvigorated and pursue his ambition with abandon? Losing to SpaceX cannot please him, said Brad Stone, author of Amazon Unbound, a new book about Bezos and his retail empire. What we know about Jeff Bezos is that he doesn't like losing. However, Stone is not sure Bezos will take a strong upper hand at Blue Origin. Although Bezos seeded the company with principles, he also seeded dysfunction by installing a very different leader in Smith. Since 2017, Bezos has more or less let Smith run Blue Origin with freedom, and he may continue to do so. It's hard for me to see Bezos taking on a more prominent executive role at Blue Origin, Stone said. Meanwhile, the time for Blue Origin is running out. And that just about wraps up today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section. Your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.